So somebody asked me to make this video to answer some questions about how to get better on the bass. So I figured I'd just go ahead and put this up for anyone who wants to know my take on things. Um, first of all, habits to avoid. Um, I can't talk about musical habits so much because that's really up to you. So I'm just going to talk about physical habits to avoid. And the first physical habit to avoid is only playing music. Um, because, of course, you pick up an instrument, you want to play music. <laughs> you, have, you have a tendency to uh, play the same types of things. Uh, and so what happens is your hands are getting a very limited, biased uh, viewpoint on physically playing the instrument. Now, the analogy here is, uh, imagine that if you want to be a basketball player, and the only time that you ever got out of your chair was to play basketball. You didn't jog, you didn't lift weights, you didn't do any other activities. You just got out of your chair only to play basketball. You'd be a really shitty basketball player because you kind of need all those other physical things. You need the jogging and the weightlifting. And all those things, they come into play. So when you play, pick up your instrument, you want to just play music. And that's fine when you're playing music. Um, however, your physical experience on the instrument is going to be limited by the kind of music that you're playing which uh, can, can suck in a lot of ways. So one of the first things that you want to avoid is only playing music. Because music is fun, but uh, doesn't, well, it won't get you there as fast as you like. You want to have physical control over the instrument. Look at it as a physical device. So you want to have music time, and then you want to have physical practice time. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So uh, the one thing about physical exercises is that they are incredibly boring. Nobody likes to do them because they're boring. And it's okay that they're boring because you really don't want to have to think about them. You want them to be integrated into your uh, physical uh, stuff. So the best way i found to do that is don't think about the exercises so much. Do them when you're watching TV. Find something that you can do when you're watching TV. Just hold the bass. It can be something as simple as... Just hitting a couple of notes, you know, something you don't have to think about, but something you can do while you're watching TV. Don't waste your TV time doing nothing when you could be building these things up. Uh, the secret to really great physical technique is having patient roommates or other people around you that can stand to hear all this stuff when you're watching TV. And so uh, if you can get in the habit of watching TV, just, you know, whatever time that you spend and do little exercises like that, you will eventually integrate them into your playing. As a matter of fact, anything that you want to integrate into your playing, it's very easy to do that. Just pick something you want to get good at and then do that when you're watching TV, whatever it is. One more thing I will say about uh, bad habits to avoid in terms of exercises is that they're called exercises for a reason. So when you see an exercise, um, for example, like sliding up to a particular note. You don't just do that once and then say, oh, well, I know how to do that now. Exercises are meant to be done uh, many times. <laughs> um, and you might think about it uh, like push-ups. You know, nobody does a couple of push-ups and say, well, I know how to do that now. No, I mean, the benefit comes from doing it a lot. And when you want to get physical control, such as sliding up to different notes or doing whatever, uh, it's something you have to do a lot. And, and that can be incredibly boring, which is why you do these exercises when you're watching TV and why they really are exercises. You don't just do them once. You never learn these things. Uh, for example, I will still sometimes, I'll be watching something and my hands will just be piddling around with little motions 
that I've worked on in the past. Uh, so, you know, exercises are great. You never stop doing them. You know, even if you're in great shape, you're still doing push-ups every day, you know, or every couple of days. Uh, so treat exercises as exercises. They're not things that you learn. They're things that you do. One thing you want to be careful about uh, physically is uh, you don't want to hurt yourself. And one thing I found, because I do a lot of exercises, or I have in the past, um, uh, you don't want to hurt yourself. And I found it is very important to keep track of your hands, uh, or at least your wrist in particular. And I won't talk about the plucking hand, I'll just talk about the wrist real quick. Um, yeah, your wrist has these tendons that go straight up in there, and they tighten up, they curl your fingers together. It's a lot of how that works. Um, one of the things you want to avoid is having your wrist go back in any way. You know, and that'll happen, like, let's say the, fret dro the you know, fretboard drops, uh, you tend to choke up on it like this. If you grab it with your thumb, you're totally going to get that. Uh, basically, anything that bends your wrist back here, it's going to stretch these tendons out, and then they're going to have to go over here and back around. What's going to end up happening is, uh, first of all, you're adding all this extra tension in your wrist that you don't need. You're stretching the tendons, so it's going to be harder to control them, and, and it's just more tension to have to close the uh, fingers like that. So you just you want to avoid this if at all possible. You want to kind of keep things upright. Um, that is the big wrist problem right there is having to go back. The other wrist problems which uh, will you know pop up depending upon how you hold things is uh, bending too far down because look what happens if you bend too far down then when those tendons pull they have to they're actually pulling away from the wrist which is not good because that creates a lot of tension. That will mess you up. Be, you know, be, be aware of that. These are long-term things that th they won't hurt till you hit 40. Uh, so I'm telling you now. Uh, the other thing you might want to be aware about is side to side. This isn't so much of an issue because usually your, your, your hand will tend to line up wherever you're going here. Um, this can be an issue if you don't have enough space. For example, if you're in a tiny little cramped up space and you're trying to play, um, your hands will compensate for that. And, and if you do have any kind of wrist strain, you know, because doing these exercises, it's, it's a very athletic thing. If you have any sort of wrist strain, uh, look at your position and make sure that you have enough room to get your arm out where it needs to be. The other things that I was asked about um, for this video, tips on slapping, which is always fun. I can't really do a lot of that on this. This is an acoustic fretless. Um, if I had an electric bass, you know, there's a lot of slap pop funk things that uh, are fun to do. Um, this is currently my favorite bass, so uh, just playing a lot of fretless uh, for a project these days. But uh, I'll give you the basics of it. Um, it's pretty much like playing anything else. Like if you're going to play with your thumb or a pick or fingers, it's just another way to hit the strings and get a sound out of them. Um, the best way to get comfortable with it is like the exercises, just do it a lot and I'll show you what you want to exercise when you're watching TV. Uh, first of all, your thumb has a little knuckle bone right there and that is really the striking surface that you want. So you want to get really good at slapping. Um, your roommates, parents, family, friends will hate you for this but uh, just kind of rest your fingers on the frets anywhere, it doesn't matter. And uh, if you like cartoons or Family Guy or whatever, spend a couple episodes of Family Guy just, or whatever, just getting used to hitting that knuckle bone there, because you're going to get a callus, you want that callus, um, it's going to take a while to build up, and you want to be able to precision hit that knuckle bone on the string. That's, it's like walking, you know, you didn't start walking right away, you had to do a lot of walking. And now you can probably walk all over the place with no problem. Uh, same with the thumbs, you know, uh, it's something that you just have to do a lot. Uh, but it's incredibly easy to get good at. Just sit there and do it through a few episodes of a TV show. Um, do it, you know, and do it rhythmically. Rhythm, rhythm is a whole other thing we'll get into in a second. There are slap pop things that uh, get more involved with different fingers and stuff, but uh, just for the slapping, get that knuckle, pop it on the string. Build up the callus, do it a lot, and eventually you'll just be able to use that however you're uh, playing over here. Another thing I was asked about was hand positions. Not really sure what the question was, but uh, a good way to get used to the hand positions, any hand position, is 
what I was showing you earlier, where you just slide up to a note. Uh, this is a fretless, so obviously you're just sliding up to a position. Uh, if you had a fretted bass, you just slide up to that fret. Uh, this hopefully looks easy the way I'm doing it, but uh, the reason I can do that is I spend a lot of time you know, on the guitar and the bass just going to target notes. And it, it is as stupid as it sounds. If you have someone in your house that can stand to listen to that when you're watching TV, you're going to be just fine. Um, pick a note, keep going to it. Um, if nothing else, it gives you something fun to do with your hands while you're watching TV. Um, and if you don't want to do it watching TV, sit there and think about it and get bored out of your skull. Some people like that. Um, anyway, that is what you want to do. Is You don't want to train so much your hand for all these little places. You want to train your arm to move. It's a full body thing. You know, you can't just uh, work on the fingers. If you just work on sliding to target notes, eventually you'll find that hand position just doesn't matter. You just, you know, oh, I'm moving here and here and here. Um, <clears throat> to be honest with you, I actually started doing some of those exercises because uh, I was learning some Steve Vai licks um, for lead guitar. He does a lot of stuff like that. And uh, just sort of as a side benefit from that, you know, I noticed the hand positions, you know, coming from that. So that's an exercise you want to do. The uh, other question that I got was faster beats, which is kind of a, a weird one because rhythm is a big thing. There's a lot of ways of approaching rhythm. Um, I'll, I'll talk about two different things. One is having good rhythm. The other is getting faster at the rhythm. Um, having good rhythm, uh, you know, some people seem to have a natural uh, feel for things. Other people don't. Um, I've learned that it's really a matter of just uh, um, tapping into the way that your body works naturally. If you like walking or jogging, you know how that feels. You get into a kind of a, a rhythm, a left to right. Um, playing bass or guitar or any kind of instrument like that is kind of throws you off because you're doing different things with your hands. Uh, things are rhythmic, but you tend to focus on the hands and forget about the body. And that's where a lot of people lose the rhythm is, you know, your hands are in this box and you're trying to keep them uh, together. Uh, that's not really going to cut it. Um, you really have to get your whole body into it. That's why you see guys moving. Uh, of course, you see some idiots moving, just doing all kinds of stuff. But uh, a lot of times you'll see experienced players uh, actually moving with music because it's a lot easier to keep track of a beat and be right on it when you're moving back and forth, even slightly. Um, it, you know, it helps to establish the tempo. Um, if, if your breathing doesn't match, if your heart rate doesn't match, uh, you're just not going to stay in time. It really has to be kind of a full body thing. Um, uh, you can tap your foot when you play. That's hard for most people. If you can do that, you'll be a great player. Uh, it's it's incredibly difficult for most people to tap a steady beat. Um, so don't feel bad if you can't do that. Uh, what I would recommend really just to get solid and comfortable is, uh, is believe it or not, actually just to do beats with your hands on your body. You can even practice your uh, slapping there, you know. Um, but uh, the, one of the first beats that I learned like this, and this will help your rhythm, uh, your brain will hate it, but uh, this is called a paradil. It's actually a, a snare drum exercise. You can do it with hand drums too. Uh, but basically it's, uh, it's an alternating pattern that kind of teaches your brain to split things up. And uh, I'll, I'll show how it works. It's a, it's a left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. So it alternates. It's a pair, uh, de, do, pair, uh, de, do. So that teaches you, first of all, teaches you to go back and forth, and it all also teaches you the double, double taps, and it forces you to keep it in time. Uh, I'll, I'll show you again real, real slow. Um, And then again, your brain won't like that. If you can get that beat going, um, that will help you control your rhythm. Um, once you once you get that beat going, you'll you'll probably get the point of it and be able to take that into other things. I can always answer more questions about it, but uh, uh, and you can look it up. A paradiddle. It's a snare drum root one. If you can do paradiddles, uh, that will increase your rhythm uh, or your, your 
how solid your rhythm is. Uh, getting faster at rhythm is, is uh, in my opinion, mostly a function of staying solid. Because anybody can play really, really fast uh, and it's just really sloppy. That happens. You can fall down a mountain fast. Uh, doesn't mean that you're running down it. Uh, so to get faster, you, you want to increase the speed, but you want to keep the stability. You don't want to just go flying off the handle. And the best way that I found uh, was actually by a guy named Scott Tennant, a um, classical guitar guy, and he called it speed bursts. And a speed burst is uh, basically you, you're playing the same beat, but then you start playing it double time. And I'll, I'll demonstrate how that works. I go one, two, three, four, dun, 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 You're just inserting an extra beat in there. You, you're basically just playing double time. You're playing the same beat, then you play twice as fast. So like... Uh, and that could be strumming or hitting however you're doing, you know, like even slapping. And essentially what you're doing is you're playing at one speed, that's the slow one, and then you're playing at twice that speed. So you get to practice locking in at the slower tempo, and then you get to practice playing at twice the tempo, basically. Uh, so in really fast music, uh, a lot of times you'll hear uh, guys are totally locked onto the beat. Uh, well, I won't play an example there. Um, but the, the, the takeaway is that uh, when you practice getting faster, you want to practice slow and build your way up and build your way up. You don't want to practice fast faster than you can actually play because you will get sloppy. You'll, you will practice getting sloppy and you'll get better at being sloppy. Uh, playing fast is really all about being a solid player at a slow tempo and bringing it up. If you, if you try to skip that step, which a lot of people do, uh, you can get fast, you can do all kinds of cool things, and then at one point you realize that you're really sloppy as hell and you'll have to go back and uh, do all that stuff anyway. Or not. Okay, so that pretty much covers uh, everything that I was asked about. Um, the only other thing that I would uh, mention is, uh, especially on the bass, is to not worry about the two middle fingers so much. Just if you can get your forefinger and your uh, pinky going, that will be most of what you need right there. Uh, because they're on the outsides, they will get you to where you're going the most, uh, and you need the strength in your pinky anyway. Uh, so. In terms of actual just playing over here, I would say uh, try to focus on these two. A lot of uh, a lot of scales are going to be two notes in, in a string that you encounter. A lot of things that you play will be that way. So uh, just get those two guys going, and uh, and then worry about the two middle ones at some other point. Anyway, uh, that pretty much does it. Uh, I wanted to record all this in video so I don't have to go over it again. And uh, if anybody else is interested in seeing it. It's here, so uh, um, if you have any more questions, feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to talk about this stuff.